Randall, thank you. Well, first of all, I, I got to come out and say that it was my idea that we wear cardigans for a cozy little chat here. So, Randall, what would you like to talk about today? I think boundaries is something that's very essential in relationships and life and it's something people overlook as well as trample over and don't really know how to sit. What's your experience with personal boundaries? Ooh, my experience with personal boundaries. For a long time, man, I would trample all over people's boundaries. I didn't have the consideration to take the time and uh, the respect of other people to think about whether their boundaries even mattered or not. How would you kind of define a personal boundary? As far as me, boundaries would be where I want, where I want as far as my proceedings to go and as far as people coming towards me where I want them to stop. It would be my barrier in or out. Okay. So there's a quote I like, which is, my rights end where your rights begin. Is that a good right. definition of a boundary? Yeah, that could be a, could be a way to look at it. So boundaries are the limits or stops we kind of put in personal relationships. Right. And I think some of their aspects may be like physical or emotional. Yeah. Some people don't like to be touched or hugged or limited. And then maybe spiritual. Yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely spiritual. Right. And then maybe material. Right. So some people don't like loaning out tools. Yeah, definitely. So you just, you know, you don't ask your buddy, hey, can I borrow X? Yeah, right. Because he's going to say, well, you know, I'm going to use an X. And I don't think it's a personal insult. Maybe it's just a boundary. Maybe his experience says, I don't like doing this. Yeah. yeah right. Yeah. So when I think of boundaries, I think about autonomy, right? Which is the ability to set one's own course or make one's own decisions in their life. So what does autonomy look like for you? And what does it look like for somebody else? Well, I mean, I would say for myself, it's, it's going to vary probably for mine versus other people's. Everybody has different paths they travel. They've had different experiences that have put them up or down in life, and different things are going to affect them differently. So for me, I mean, my boundaries, if you ask me, are way further back than most people's. I don't, I don't get rubbed wrong very easily, but at the same time, if you go straight to some of my personal zones... I'm going to blow my whistle and throw my flag. Okay. So it's a matter of like reaction. Yeah. To, so you don't know a boundary until essentially you cross it or how's, how do we discover these boundaries? Well, I mean, one of the ways is for me is you just have to spend quality time with me. I'm, I'm not always a get off on the, on the right shoe with people as soon as I meet people. And most people honestly don't like me at first. Well, I liked you the first time I met you. Oh, thanks. But it was a small interaction. You don't have to. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so how do we set boundaries with people? Set, all right. The, the way, first you have to figure out to yourself, for example, say me and you, if uh -huh. The boundaries that I need to set there is I need to, to myself, define our relationship, what I want from it, where I want it to go, where, and, and the broadness of what will encapsulate it. Okay. So it sounds like they, those boundaries may be specific to that person or that relationship. Yeah, they, they should be, they should be very fluid and they should vary. My boundaries with you aren't going to necessarily be my boundaries with my girlfriend. Those sure. are going to be completely different. Right. What do you think about the power of saying no? Ooh, that's a hard thing to do sometimes, yeah. especially if you have any little bit of the people pleaser bone in you. Yeah. So for me, I have sometimes a hard time saying no or not raising my hand right. when called on to do something. What I find is when I don't respect my own personal boundaries in that way, I grow like angry or tired or burnt out or kind of resentful. Resentment's yeah. And it's never at myself. And I'm the person in charge of my own boundaries, it's always outward. It's always at the other person, right? Okay. When I bought the ticket and I decided to take the ride, no one has forced me to do anything, right? Right. So how do I become aware, more aware of my own boundaries is something I have to kind of ask myself. Well, I think, at least in my experience, like me, okay, so let me compare me, mine to yours. Mine is the same as yours up until the extent of I back up a little bit further because in reality, when I buy the ticket and I go on the ride and I'm not happy with buying the ticket, I'm not mad at the ride for being a bad ride. Okay. I'm mad at myself because really somewhere hidden back here, I already knew what was coming. So I have to maybe examine what my own motives are. If I'm trying to please people or 
And you have to be aware of that because it's easy. I, I mean, I'm, I'm an occasional people pleaser. It's very easy to, to slip back into those people pleasing shoes and to not stand up for your own self and what you feel is right or where you want those boundaries to start and stop just because you might kind of favor that person a little bit. Or what about the opposite? What if I'm willing to kind of sell myself out in the hopes of getting something from somebody else? You see what I mean? Like I'm, have you ever been willing to like go past your own comfort? Yeah, but to get because you think maybe down the ride I'm gonna gain you favor here or so on and so on. Yeah, I see what you're saying, and that, with me, that's I'm kind of in with that because it's it, first off, it's having selfish motives if you're doing that. Okay. All right, but there's still can be a mutually beneficial reason you're doing that. That's that's a very fluid thing too. It's a situational based. Right. So, and it sounds like the boundaries will change over time. Definitely. They can grow with it. With every relationship, as you let people in, your boundaries are going to grow, I would think. Or they may, you know, push further out. Once I come to see that you're a slime ball and I don't really want you, I'm going to push you further out instead of letting you under my wing. So it sounds like you think of boundaries in a very physical sense, almost like you're standing in this hula hoop. Yeah, that could, <laughs> I like that hula hoop, yeah. And the hula hoop can like kind of grow or expand or kind of shrink depending on the relationship or maybe even the circumstance. Definitely. And it, it can be circumstantial. And one of the things you have to keep in mind, too, especially when you get on, on the concept of, say, physical boundaries. Mm -hmm. If you're around somebody that doesn't like to be touched, you never know in reality what trauma you could mentally throw them into just by touching them. Sure. So maybe that brings up like how do we respect other people's boundaries? Is that something you're good at? Well, I typically have not been good at that. But part of the problem, other than the fact that I used not to care enough to even try to establish what boundaries were really with people, is because sometimes they're hard to identify, especially if you're not in an intimate friendship or relationship with that person and they're not just openly telling you. Sometimes you got to, like me, you have to put light, bright blinking signs up sometimes to make me see something. So it seems like, for me, in order to respect somebody's boundaries, I have to kind of pay attention to them first. Yes, definitely. It's going to take some observation. Right. So maybe if I'm telling a joke or picking or, you know, messing around with somebody and I see their face fall, I know I've maybe crossed a boundary or hurt their, hurt their feelings. Right. And then what do I do? I have to kind of acknowledge the boundary. Right. Yeah, it would be a good thing at that point to try to, you know, maybe turn the, the ribbing that you're doing if it's not completely too late and just try to fix it or and or try to apologize to them. Right. Um, now, previously me, I'm just going to, I'm not me, if I see your face slump, <laughs> I'm going all the way in. I'm going to try to hurt your feelings more because that, that's the person I used to try to be. But You're going to beat the dead horse. Huh? Right. I'm going to keep beating the dead horse, but... I just, I don't, I don't do that anymore. I don't have to live like that anymore. So if I can identify a boundary or maybe if I'm paying attention to the other person or asking them, Hey, is this okay? Maybe consent is something here, particularly with physical touch, that kind of things. Yeah, that could be, but you, you could still, depending on where they're at and their healing of, of particular said trauma, they might not want to share that with you or where y'all are at in the development of y'all's relationship. So I've experienced this before where the, where both parties maybe go past the boundary, you know, like the idea of oversharing. Have you ever been with somebody and you all just start I'm, just I'm talking about all the past? And yeah, but that's because <laughs> for myself, at least I'm an oversharer because the people that brought me up in the world, they always taught me that knowledge is power. It does you no good if you just have it and don't use it. But see, the key there is you still have to learn there's a boundary of which you stop sharing it. Sure. As well as there is a right time and a wrong time for everything. Okay. And for me, often identifying the right time is, is difficult, but the wrong time, I just, it's always the wrong time. So, so it sounds, I like the quote, good, good fences make good neighbors. Or is it good? Yeah. Have you heard that before? Uh, maybe. Kind of, kind of, I may have heard it before, but I, if it's good fences make good neighbors, I could kind of see the concept there. Right. So when I think about boundaries or personal boundaries, I think more like two neighbors, right? They have a boundary between their two properties. Right. And let's say they're getting an argument or disagreement about where the boundary is. 
right. or whose rights are where, right? What are the only two ways that seem to resolve that boundary issue is either discussion, right, where we talk it out, or dispute, right, right, where maybe we get fist involved or lawyers involved or any of these other things, maybe conflict, right? So it seems like in respecting other people's boundaries, I have to avoid conflict. Do you know, does that sound reasonable? Yeah, as well as, as you know, if, if, if say with the neighbor uh, example, it's, it's, it, there's an obvious boundary. Sure. The fence is the obvious boundary, whether it's in the right place or the wrong, and it makes, having that degree of separation too, also makes, can help a relationship if, if you're into the helping of that relationship. Now, if you're like the Clampets and the McLowrys or whoever, you know, and y'all famous fighting family for years, <laughs> You're just, not going to care. I think, aren't the Clampets the Beverly Hillbillies, first of all? <laughs> I'm just, okay. The, so I think empathy is really big here. Being able to think or feel what the other person, or to imagine what the other person is thinking or feeling. Yeah. Right? Because I'm, like you, we said earlier, I, we, I might know, not know the boundary. Or maybe they're from a different culture, and I don't understand what the boundaries are. Right. Or what, you know, is polite or any of those things. So I think when confronted with something or the feeling that maybe I've hurt someone or angered them or whatever, my natural reaction is to get angry myself, is to kind of like respond and to, you know, to retaliate. Yeah. So I have to have like a break there, you know, like a mental kind of emergency break to say, whoa, whoa, this person is just responding because maybe I've, you know, cross a boundary here. Maybe I've upset them and maybe it has nothing to do with what my experience is. Maybe this is just theirs, right? Yeah. And it's not personal anymore. So what are some other ways we can kind of like respect people's boundaries or their autonomy or their right to choose or, you know? Well, you know, Everybody deserves the ability to choose and to be their own person. Okay. That's for sure. Because I mean, whether they're whether they're happy people, whether they're sad people, whether they're black people, whether they're white people, none of that actually matters in the big scheme of things, man. You need to love everyone like you love yourself. You need to love. You need to treat others the way you expect to be treated. That's something that I think severely is overlooked big time nowadays. Is we no longer have the time, as we see you broken down on the side of the road, to stop and ask you for if you need help. But we do have the time to hurry up to get to nowhere, to honk as we drive by, to do things that just show we don't care about others. Okay. If it wasn't for real friends and, and things like that, man, some people would be stuck on the side of the interstate for days and days at a time. So what it sounds like you're describing here is in kind of a paradox. Very much. So like we all, if you, when you're just what you're describing, and I agree, we're all one. We're all just people, right? We all deserve the same rights and love and respect, right? Right. But then each of us have these own, these set of like personal boundaries. And then we have to kind of respect those and other people. But it, it sounds like what you're saying is at the same time, while I'm respecting your boundaries, identifying them, setting my own, kind of manning my own, right? Yeah. Part of me, part of my thinking has to recognize the person sitting across from me, just another person, yeah. right? We're all no better, no worse, you know? Um, so maybe a part of respecting or understanding boundaries is like respecting our commonality, right? Yeah. The you should always look for things that, that the similarities instead of looking for the differences because just like in a untrusting relationship if you look for a problem if you go through people's phones you're always going to find something there's always something there if you look so maybe part of respecting boundaries is then what we said earlier about setting my my own which is examining what my motives are so if i'm jealous or fearful in a romantic relationship or any another type of relationship, I'm going to be more likely to, you know, transgress 
those boundaries, going through people's phone, asking a bunch of leading questions, you know, those sorts of things. So maybe I have to like figure out a way to finish that up. Is there anything else you want to say before we end? Um, love one another. Okay. That's all I can go with. Well, thank you. Thank you guys for listening. Well, thank you. <laughs>